two, uh, that, 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 that pepper uh, the, the entire portrayal of Stoicism are meant to show that someone cares about the formation of your soul. Or to put that differently and maybe more, in a more important way, that there is a right way to form your soul and a wrong way to form your soul. There's a pattern of human excellence. So what is a good life according to this philosophy? The self-satisfaction of a good man. In other words, I please myself and I have internalized the proper standard of judgment. I am praiseworthy. I am admirable. Perhaps sometimes you might do an anonymous good thing to someone. You feel good about yourself? And whether or not you should care about another person, another question, let's leave that aside for now. When you do something anonymously good for another person and feel good about it, that is a window to what a virtuous stoic will experience. You do it because it's right, not because of praise. <coughs> and you know it. You have pleased yourself. And you are a good person to please. You know, a lot of people please themselves, but they're depraved. That's not a great standard. The standard here of a good life is being satisfied with what you have controlled. Being satisfied with the exercise of your will. So Stoics don't sit here and try to prove human freedom. They say, look, there's a lot of stuff that's beyond our control. The uniqueness of them is to say, look, and that stuff that's beyond your control, don't try to control it, let it go. And control the formation of your own soul. And this is a philosophy that explains Conrad to himself. He begins to understand what kind of a man Conrad is, why he wouldn't compromise with a lie, why he didn't think prison was the worst place. And the description of this prison is not like a walk in the park. It is filled with people with a false understanding of manliness. It is filled with people overly concerned with athletic prowess, right? People who take part of Charlie's understanding of manliness and make it into the whole thing, right? So they do dips on the way into the shower. They masturbate in the visiting center. There's a perverse understanding of social prominence or turf wars in the prison. And Charlie looks at the prison and as he looks at the rest of the world as embracing this non-Epictetan, non-Stoical, false understanding of manliness. They're all enslaved to things that they cannot control. I raise this as a question. Could a Stoic ever have sex? If it was anonymous and they did good for the lady. 
But the process of arousal would be very difficult to accomplish, right? Because we are dependent on our bodies for that. So only if the male organ were entirely under the control of the human will would it be acceptable. You following me? Um, and so in other words, time to get up. You'd have to, that's controlling your will. Otherwise, you're dependent on your body. So this is, I mean, I'm just trying to illustrate for you what stoical independence and virtue means through a common phenomenon. Okay, good. Now, after reading Epictetus,